You're listening to Boosh Radio. Boosh. Boosh. Boosh Radio. Your real talk radio. State Affairs with Edmondo Below is live. You are still a journalist, right? I am. I mean, you don't retire from your profession. You retire from your position. So I'm a journalist. I'll be a journalist forever. Journalism has given you the opportunity to make a lot of friends. Yes. Journalism does that to you. Especially if you're, if you're a writer. And a writer in journalism. Uh, but there are times some people question what you really stand for because you seem to be playing with all shades of our political opinion and kind of the kind of friendships you make. Because um, I consider myself, one, a world citizen. Two, I consider myself above petty jealousies and um, restrictions and so on. Uh, and I don't allow anybody to define me for myself. In other words... Since I don't inherit people's prejudices, I befriend whoever chooses to befriend me. So what do you really look out and for before you choose your friends? Integrity and intellect. But yeah. there are some of your friends, some, some Nigerians would not agree with you, have the integrity that you just mentioned. I can't think of any of my friends, of my close friends, that will be described as lacking in integrity. You you have former governors as friends. Yes, I do have. You, you have many retired military officers as friends. Quite a lot of them. Uh, can you say some of these past governors are saints? I don't think there's any saint walking the surface of the earth. But having said so, those that I associated with, it also depends on the level of my association. That I work with somebody or work for somebody does not necessarily mean that we are friends. The people you call friends may just be mere acquaintances, not necessarily friends in the strict sense of the word. Abacha was your friend. Abacha was, yes. Abacha was when he was a general officer commanding in Ibadan here. And he became a friend. I mean, if you want to know, Abacha spent his childhood days in Ibadan. They have their, their, their house, family house in Mokola there, where he grew up. And um, when he was GOC, he, I think when he came to town, he wanted to meet uh, media people and so on. So Chijuka was the Army Public Relations Officer for the second div, and Chijuka and I became friends, and uh, uh, Bacha, cool, quiet, easygoing man at that point in time, and we became friends. You know, he and his wife, Marion, will come here and eat Amala, and I was a visit with them at Yagogo, as I did with uh, Dogon Yaro, as I did with Adamu Martin, as I did with uh, General Luleye. You know, those are GOCs in Ibadan here, and uh, General uh, Ali Muhammad Guso. The Abacha that was your friend. And also the Goyaro. Later made you leave Nigeria. Yes. In the 1990s. Yeah, that's right. Why were you scared of your friend? Well, I, the, the things that I knew that he wanted power very badly. And he came to power in, under a circumstance that was very very difficult for me to accommodate, given the fact that I was very, very close to Abiola, and given the fact that I was also very close to Babangida. So you had loyalty being, if you like, having three pegs in a hole, and he had become somewhat and somehow uncomfortable with me uh, following the attempt that was made on his life uh, in 1992, when the um, when his room his, uh, his, his room on, on the tenth floor on his tenth floor the sixth floor of Minister of Defence was bombed, and um, for some strange reason he believed that I had a foreknowledge of that incident, and he thought that as a friend I ought to have won- forewarned him, you know. And truly, I didn't have a full knowledge of that incident. But I, on the day that it happened, I, I was putting phone calls across to, to all his aides to ask if he was safe and all that. And Why that. would an abacha suspect that you would have known that something was going to happen? Because that day? Uh, 
Prior to that day, the Daily Times, which I was heading at that time, had published stories uh, suggesting that uh, those who attempted the coup of uh, 1990 were still hell-bent on seeking revenge. Are you that? talking about the Gideon Mokaku? Oh, yes, yes. And that um, they were going to bomb the Minister of Defense, they were going to bomb the Minister of Finance, and they are going to... The story was out there, and that was the story that came to the late times, and it was published. So he then linked it up with the fact from military intelligence that that story must have just been an appetizer, a teaser, so when eventually something happened to him, it might be played at the desktop of the coupists. And so he said that was what he believed in. That was what military intelligence told him about, that that story published by Daily Times uh, was just to wear the ground to make people believe that when Bomb went out in his office, that it was the coupists who, who plotted it. Then they had uh, an inquiry to check how the you know, who did the 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 the, the, the mayhem uh, in the, the in the defense building. And I was invited to testify and of course I did not show up. Why did you not show up? Because I mean what why should a reporter be invited to if if the Minister of Defence was bombed and uh, why should you invite me to come and testify? Testify for what? So when you did not show up, yes. what happened? When I didn't show up there was a paper in Akure that made it a front page story at that time, told I didn't is in trouble. Military authorities. So, they, did you did you know you were really in trouble when you did not show up? Well, I didn't f- feel obliged to to show up. Yes, I knew there might be trouble because uh, my I said I asked them my editor at that time, Femi Shunai, I said you go and represent the Daily Times. I asked uh, maybe the gentleman. I said I would not I would not I would not show up. I mean, why, why why should I show up? That was under the Babangida regime. Yes. Who really wanted Abacha out then? I will not know, but I also what I do know was that people who knew about his ambition to be head of state uh, would do anything in their power to stop him. But Chief Adini, would you agree with me that super journalists like you, yes, who sir. had a lot of information, yes, hid it from the people? allowed the military guys to hold the nation to ransom. Why are journalists like you still keeping this information from the public? No, the, the thing is that journalists all over the world do have access to information and intelligence. But uh, will, will a journalist go out and say, uh, General ABCD or Brigadier GY was planning a coup or that was going to stage a coup? I mean, why, why? Is there anything wrong with that? No, no, no. A journalist, we, we, a journalist the, the Bob Woodwards of this world, the Water Cronkite of yes, this world, yes. will leave that information in the public domain yeah, at not, the right time. Yeah, but not about coups. They, 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 they are not talking about coups. But the military guys are no more there. Yes. You can tell us a lot now. I have a lot to tell. But the, the thing is that most of what I want to say had already been put down in a book. It has been expressed in a book. The book is titled In the Belly of the Military. And that book is yet to be out. 1966 to 1999. But you are still keeping the book. Yeah, it's already it's, it's, it's already it's already in, in safe somewhere with, with, with the banks and so on. When are you going to release the book? Probably uh, I would not know. I'm 70 now or thereabout. If uh, I'm lucky to have another 20 years or 10 years, I might. Why are you playing safe? No, no, it's not out of fear. There are some, for instance, I wanted the book out in 1999 when I first came back from my from exile. But then a passenger just surfaced as somebody who was going to be president or who was going to who was being put forward to to run for presidency and so on and so forth by his military colleagues. And I thought it was not the best time for me to release the book in the middle of the military. 
In the book, did you talk about the plan by the top military generals that overthrew the government of Shagari? Did you talk about their plan? Of there was nothing hidden about the fact that after Bakwa had been killed, um, the, and uh, Bang, and uh, Buhari was made head of state. He would have been the head of state because he was he was the leader of the coup. He was the most senior. He was one who went to actually to to uh, cost. Uh, a uh, uh, Shagarian to arrest him. So uh, Bako was killed. If Bako had not been killed, Bako probably would have been the head of state. And then they had a compromise uh, candidacy in uh, Buhari. And I think, if my re- recollection is correct, it, it, it was at that point in time planned or, or arranged that certain characters will take over from Bako after four years, another will take over from that person, another will take over from that person. And that uh, if Christians uh, made the noise, then the Christian, uh, like Dogunjaro, would take over. In the, in the uh, 14th year or 12th year, to run to 16th year. Uh, let me get it clear. Yes. Was it that Buhari was going to rule for four years, then Babangida four years, and then Abacha four years? Yes, yeah, something like that. And you knew that Buhari was going to be overthrown? Not that I knew. The things are, these things are not documented. I, could have known. I'm not, I wasn't a military guy. I wasn't in the military. You remember you were at a polytechnic in Abiyokucha? Yes, I was there. What did you say there? I was a guest speaker, and I, because uh, of the noise being made here and there, that, and I quote myself that, ladies and gentlemen, that you shouldn't be surprised if you hear again, I brigade uh, Sonabacha. What were you trying to tell the students? That probably we have not come to the full stop that what we had was just a comma and that another military personnel could intervene and overthrow Buhari at that point in time. Chief Adini, you were an instrument in the hands of some members of the political class and the military to overthrow General Muhammad Buhari. True or false? No, I wasn't an instrument. I couldn't have been an instrument. How could I have been an instrument? I was just a common, simple journalist uh, with a lot of political viva, journalists with a lot of activism, but I couldn't have been an instrument. In Remember, the, the pen of, is mightier than the sword. Yes, yeah, so if it was the pen, yes, my pen could campaign for overthrow of a government, my pen could campaign, could, could, could initiate or engineer a revolt, but not that I uh, was instrument in the hands of any, of, any, of any political class. I couldn't have been. Did you write against Buhari? Incidentally, no. I mean, I was a columnist in Punch. Even when he detained my friend, Al Rashid Aruna Damu, and uh, another friend, I could only appeal to him. And um, I didn't support Decree 4 at that time, but I was not particularly uh, antagonistic to Buhari, even when he was, uh, when he was head of state. I cannot recollect any of my articles in Punch then when I was a columnist. Uh, openly or blatantly attacking Buhari. You are an acidic writer. Yes, I've always been. Why didn't you attack Buhari? When, we, 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 you know, when, he, took, when he took over, Nigeria was disenchanted with the NPN government. And I was disenchanted with the NPN government. And I gave that party and the political class at that point in time hell in the kind of things I was writing in the Tribune. It's very my column... Till death do us part, you know, six columns a week on that on that title with other with other two other columns I was writing, eight, eight columns every week, attacking MPN and being very acidic as to use your word. So when Buari then took over, we thought that things were going to be normalized and that a new phase of life was you know was coming up and Nigeria had uh, a new lease of life. So I did not do anything uh, for the. I was. I, I wrote all the time. It was it was it was out of state. Eighty four, eighty five. I was a columnist in Punch. But how come you were not angry? In nineteen seventy nine, you worked with the UPN. I worked with the. I worked with the. I worked with the Tribune. Uh, but but you, you were the UPN for some time. That was in seventy eight. Yes, I worked with UPN in seventy eight. Okay, in seventy eight. Yes, not seventy nine. No, seventy eight. 78, 78. So you, you were part of the publicity uh, network of yes, the party was, at the I time? Yes, I was deputy or you know, special assistant to Chief M. Sika my boss. And I can always say, 
When Buhari took over, he arrested some of the governors of the UPN. Yes, he did. Governors you had sympathy for. Certainly. And these governors wanted Buhari out, right? They did, yes. Why did they want Buhari out? The Bola, I guess. They, they were fed up with what they considered to be injustice. They thought that if MPN was the, the failure of MPN was the trigger for the overthrow of the MPN government, of Shell government, why should the, the UPN also be, you know, uh, refunded? And uh, so they certainly didn't feel comfortable with Buhari as head of state. Did they reach out to you? Uh, I wouldn't know. I mean, I, I visited them. I visited some of them in prison. What did they tell you? What they told me was that they are not happy. And, and if you are in their shoes, you will also have told me the same. They wanted Buhari out. Even if they wanted Buhari out, which they didn't hide, I would have been able to influence that. So I would have been able to affect that. You have the pen. And you had the connection. I had connections. Your friends were in the military. Yes, they they were. Abacha was your friend. Babangida was your friend. Yes. So, did you take any message to Babangida and Abacha? I don't think I will answer that question. I don't think... I I wouldn't know. I, I, I certainly wouldn't... Answer whether I, I took a message. No one sent me on an errand to Babangida. Remember, you knew that Buhari was going to be overthrown. I suspected, give him the sixth sense, give him my experience, that it was not, not likely to last. And you knew IBB was going to be the next head of state, right? I didn't know who was going to be head of state, but I knew that um, among those left... After Bakwa had been killed and after Buhari had taken over, the next most obvious person to succeed in would have been Babangida. Was Buhari planning at any time to deal with the chief of army staff who was, Buhari, who was uh, Babangida at the time? We heard of that later, but I wasn't aware. The case of Gloria Okun, military officers pushing drugs. Yes. As an investigative journalist, yes. did you have a hint of that? I never heard, but I heard later when the stories came out. But I never, I never heard of Gloria Ocon. I didn't know who she was, and I, till today, I wouldn't say I believed or disbelieved uh, Gloria Ocon's story because I have no, no evidence to the effect or to confirm the story. You know, I can't wait to read your book in the belly of the military. It's a terrible book. Why terrible? If the book had been released in 1999, several so-called big men in this country would have been roasted in the public, not just lynching. They would lynch them and then set them ablaze because of the roles they had played all along since 1966. Bush Radio. Bush Radio. Bush, Bush, Bush. Bush Radio. Your Real Talk Radio.